Welcome to Slab Podcast, episode 67, where the grades matter, there are no rules. How you doing, Professor Oak? Howdy. How's it going? Fucking terrible. Terrible. Same. Will so we wrap. Alive. End yep. it. No. Game this over. This is the last episode of the Slab Podcast you guys will ever see. Um, no. Let's start out with a really rough tone. So I was listening to a guy last night, and he was saying that the world does a reset for human existence every 100 years. Basically, every single one of us right now in 100 years is going to be dead. And there's going to be a whole new bunch of people running the planet. Literally, every single person is going to be brand new. It's going to be a whole new reset. And... That makes sense, but I hadn't consciously thought about that before. Kind of blew my mind a little bit. It is a different human existence every hundred years, literally. Yep. So let's start on that. I'd say every, like literally every seventy-five years. Probably so. Yeah. Yeah. Because probably about there. Yeah. Oh, maybe I don't know. Unless you're talking about our presidentes. Um, shout out to those dudes. They're gonna do a, I think it's like a senior citizen debate tomorrow at 9 p.m. They, Eastern Standard Time. I think it's a competition they, to see who the fuck falls asleep first. Are they debating each other? Yeah, tomorrow, 9 p.m. I did not know that. That's yeah, really that's mu- must watch TV 100. percent I didn't know they. I didn't realize it was that early that they were starting in the it's year. Like the earliest wow. one forever because it's. It is. As they get closer to the fall, they both start getting tired earlier, so they can't do the bait. <laughs> the sun starts setting sooner. Oh my god! Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't know the age of both of those sons of bitches, but they are definitely both very old. Um, I think they're both eighties. I don't know, but it's it's absurd. Um, we need a cap, please, for the love of God, the United States of America. We need an age cap. We got a we got a minimum, which is I think thirty five for a president. We need like sixty five max, please. You're just you out of touch with the world at at a certain point. The thirty five thing I think is good because that stops Justin Bieber getting voted in, right? That stops like the little kids that get famous on TikTok, yeah, like that kind of stuff, where they maybe could have rallied votes enough to actually to actually win win something no one's like voting for a 40 year old on tiktok right like that's not that's not a thing so i don't know but anyways yeah go check that out and uh get educated on how effed we are so this would be great i do i i want to see that then no i do too i plan that's gonna be I, I interesting. literally it's as exciting for me as the freaking Super Bowl. I'm just going to be like, wow, we are so epic. <laughs> oh, God. It's a freaking, yeah, America. I can't vote. I am an immigrant. I'm a legal alien. I'm a legal resident alien, but I can't vote and I can't do jury duty. So, oh, you poor guy. Yep. So, um, that's it. Opinions that's the two not valid. That's it. I'm the lit. I have this all the same rights as you. I've got because of legally, like how far I've gone. The next step is just citizenship. Like I'm literally just a step down from citizenship. And the only difference is that I I can't vote, I can't um, do jury duty, and I can't serve in my local police force. I don't know if there's some police forces that do accept immigrants, but right here they want they. I know that's not a thing. That's the only things I've discovered yeah. in the past. Florida would of, do that for sure. Thing, yes. Yeah. You probably you could probably do that here in Michigan for sure. Yeah. Hmm. If you're ever interested, let me know. Um, speaking of starting off on a rough edge, you hear about Mr. Dr. Disrespect? You know who that is? Yeah. What happened? You didn't hear? You hear you you know he got banned from Twitch, right? Like whatever, a couple of years ago, in twenty twenty, Age, ages ago, yeah. It was for talking to a minor through their Twitch chat. I didn't know that. Yeah, it just came to light in the last forty eight hours. It, it that, has exploded. 
on the internet. That wasn't public at the time, right? No, it just came public literally in the last like 40, 72 hours, 48 hours. Um, it he didn't go to jail, he didn't get fined or whatever. He's not on a list, but there was he led to, like if you if if you watch some of the whatever he he admitted to talking to a minor and it led to some inappropriateness but very not great and uh yeah i mean that's so, not just to- that's not just talking if something something happened yeah i didn't know that i didn't i didn't see that at all that's crazy i just thought yeah. it was like bs like marketing type stuff going on like you know all the all the Oh, ban from here. Oh, bring him back. Ban from here. Bring him back. All that kind of stuff. Because I know that's happened with quite a few no, years. The past few years. It's uh, a bunch of his, like, Ninja played with him all the time. Tim the Tap Man. Yeah. So I've watched, like, they've both talked about it. And they're like, obviously, that's effed completely. Like, Did he ever do a full, like, face reveal? I don't know if I've ever seen him without. Doctor? Like, it, yeah. Yeah. He has a couple times, but he's all he, like he, yeah. I've seen clips where somebody actually shot his house and he took all this stuff off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good looking dude. He's probably like forty now. I don't even. Yeah, know. yeah. I'd I'd say he's wild. One of the older. biggest content creators of all time. Just. That seems so Coffee dumb. Zilla, Coffeezilla covered it. Watch his video. He did a just he like recapped what the doctor said on Twitter or whatever. Interesting. That's an, yeah, that's crazy. What an amazing position it was in to just like do something so fucking dumb. Like what an asshole. Oh my god. Yeah. No, we haven't seen receipts yet, but a god knows they gotta be coming. I don't know. You would think you would have led with them if they weren't that bad, as he was saying. I would have just been like, Aaron, here they are. Everything's out in the wind now. Mm. That's him not sharing those is super sus. So, anyways, let's get into Pokemon, shall we? Like, uh, let's get into the spicy comment winner. The person is getting a hat, an effing slabbed hat to this winner. It's so nice. It's Man. such a good hat. So, so fresh. So, shout out to Thrifty. You are an absolute effing legend. Whoop, whoop. Cheers. Cheers to Thrifty TCG. Cheers. You are Cheers. you are a freaking boss. Thank Cheers. you for Cheers. commenting. Thanks for all the... the all, it seems that you watch a lot of these videos. I truly appreciate it. like seeing you every time I'm at a Collecticon. Thank you. And I'm glad you are the one winning the hat. So, if you could just send me on Discord your uh address and i will get it out to you um i think i think i've got it i could probably shoot you uh if you could i'll let you read this place comment yeah thanks for that because it's a freaking stab at me (laughs) so thrifty (laughs) my friend made her youtube video video youtube video debut with me on my channel actually the first time she ever did a face reveal um Absolute superstar. I love you so much. So underrated. And Thrifty said, Oak thinking Sausage Party was a good movie is almost as surprised, more surprising than the pizza in the mayo thing. I feel like that's a double whammy hit. I mean, like two little, two little stabs. Um, yeah. I thought Sausage Party was funny. It's just dumb, easy. Like anything with Seth, it's Seth Rogen, right? Is that his name? Seth, it, I, I think it's Is Seth, Seth Rogen. Yeah. I think anything with that kind of humor, just like dumb, silly humor, like it's so easy to enjoy. And clearly it's just me because like a lot of people upvoted that, you know, a lot of people give a thumbs up and liked it. But I thought it was funny. I think they're making a number two, or they just did. It just came out. I know, I know I saw a, a trailer for, for, um, number two so that maybe that'll be better maybe that will enlighten our enlighten our minds on it and uh let's not get into pizza and mayo because i'm gonna go down a rabbit hole so i've never seen sauce party so i can't relate thrifty but i do love i love as a white guy dick jokes and just so many 
so Dick much. Jokes and dark humor is just phenomenal to me. The whole um, way through, it's just dumbass like dick jokes, literally. Uh, this guy Kill Tony, who does the, he did the Tom Brady roast. Apparently, he's he's already pretty big. He uh, he was one of the he killed it. He has his own YouTube thing. I've been literally when I have downtime and I'm out of content to listen to and stuff. I'll listen to his. It's literally just comedy stand up. People get on the stage and they just roast the living shit out of them. Um, <laughs> it, it's phenomenal. Um, so it would, I just love, love the darkest, the, the darker the humor, the effing, the better. I love it. So I'm sure I would love that movie. It's funny. It is, it is funny. And it's an all star cast. I mean, there's so many like people in there that you can recognize the voice, like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah I'm it, a child. It's, it's fun. It's just silly. It's just silly fun. It's like adult. It's a it's a kid show for adults. It it really and it's just it's just that simple. So I, I think mm-hmm. it's funny. But the good, new good one comes out. New one comes out on the eleventh. There is a new one. Okay, so what's that? Like three weeks. All right. Yep. Set your count. Set your timer now. Yeah. I do. Uh, I haven't been to the movies in forever. It's been man, a couple I, of years. I go at least like every third week. Literally. Yeah, the only um, problem here is in Florida, you, I mean, you're just worried about getting shot. Like, <laughs> there's just a lot of crazy people in places like that. So, this is the podcast of positivity. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're going down it tonight. <laughs> uh, next week, spicy comment. Uh, so I'm giving. I'm doing another giveaway. This is just the month of giveaways. Apparently, uh, the winner is going to get a tag slab. Do what. Do whatever you will with it. You're gonna get one. Um, so stay tuned for that. The so the most upvotes you get the tag slab. My spicy comment for this week. I gotta. I gotta do the call out. Calling out a name dropping. Um, oh God. You ready? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Pokey Chef is the modern day basic trainer. Your turn, bud. Send it. Okay. I mean, right, mine's you're got, right. You're right. Mine's got nothing on that. Um, I was, <laughs> I was gonna say Tag is the most inconsistent trading <laughs> company in the world ever, but um, very different avenues right there. So uh, I hope you. Were, we're talking about that one next week because I I just listened to some shit in a fuck it. It was hilarious. So okay, everyone, well, drop your votes down below. Please. Let's go. Let's go head to head. Let's see. That'll be good. Let's talk about some stats. I love numbers. Ooh, I love numbers. Okay. So um I know we talk a lot about grading stats, right? It's the slab podcast. We talk about PSA. What did they do last month? Each month, the beginning of the month, we look back uh, courtesy of gem gem rate data and I kind of want to look a little bit at auction stats, and I pulled PWCCs um, since they went to their own site. Since they've been running their own auctions, they count through one through, I think we're at 127, 137 or something now. Um, yeah. So it's been a couple of years, essentially, you know, of the, have, the yeah. weekly auctions. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're blasting through them. And they have sold total the stat for the total item sold. I'm guessing paid for because I know they remove unpaid from sold when I've checked before. They don't show there anymore. So I'm hoping that this number stat is inclusive of that, um, of eliminating anyone didn't pay. But anyway, I'm going down a rabbit hole. 2.6 million, a little over 2.6 million, 2,645,176 2, items sold. 
and two and a half, you know, like you say, like two, two and a half years, um, a million a year ish on average, you know, it's not much of a data set to, to average out, but that's a lot of items. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's a big number. I mean, it's two months of PSA grading, like if you look at it that way, but for yeah. one auction house, when there's eBay has such a big reach, such a big scope, they took 2.6 million sales from eBay. In my eyes, that's that's how I see it. That's huge. Yes. So for me, I can see Fanatics expanding that and doing something special. Like that is a lot of items. Um, I also pulled Pokemon stats. They sold 332,006 Pokemon um, items on there, which is, you know, almost exactly a third of a million items it's a lot that's that's a lot so i was curious what your thoughts were i'm curious what people at home are thinking um on that on their success i know they were doing big volume on ebay back in the day um i never counted or really looked at their stats on ebay back then i was just looking at random stuff but having that data available on their website i thought that was i thought that was super interesting it seemed yeah. like a lot so again, that was only that was of the two point six million three hundred thousand is Pokemon three hundred thirty right. thousand. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so probably about forty cards were MetaZoo. Um, <laughs> yeah, two point six million. I just looked it up on eBay. I just wanted to see how many. I just typed in Pokemon PSA to see how many listings. It was one point two million. Then I did Pokemon CGC, and it was one hundred twenty thousand. So. 10 percent um was that sold listings those are just active i was just so now i okay. in my i was like how how much how quickly is that that number or the 1.2 million would they have to turn that over to get close to the 2.6 but that's also just pokemon psa so i'm sure they are annihilating the shit out of these numbers but 2.6 million sales at whatever their percentage rate, call it 5%, average sale item is $75. A lot, a a lot of them are expensive, right? Like, we're not talking yeah. $10 slabs all day. Like, there are yeah. some pretty expensive sales that we've seen on PWCC. Yeah, I'd say, if I had to guess, I'd say anywhere between $75 to $150 is the average sale price if you were to look at the $2.6 million. So it's a lot of, uh, a lot of money that uh, they lost out on ebay booting them but they might have knew they're like we don't even need them anymore we got psa in the talks mm -hmm. they flubbed up one time oh we can just execute them now because they broke this term let's just get rid of them two years we're gonna have ebay clean clean no competition let's go or psa um and that's where they're that's where we're at right now in the current crazy Do you think do you think it'd be good to look deeper at some of those stats? See, like you mentioned, what's the average item sold? What's the average Pokemon item sold? Like how many Yu-Gi-Oh did this sell? How many of this did it sell? Do you think it'd be interesting to look Yeah? I don't know. Because I could pull a couple of stats for next podcast if we think how the hell would you get that? I could get it. Yeah, if you fuck. If you can get it, that'd be very interesting. I could get, um, I could get, I could get some stuff. I'm sure, I'm sure I could pull some more stats. Yeah. The sale price, if you can get that, I would, that would be impressive shit. That'd be scraping, I feel like. Okay. You want to look at some BGS stats? <laughs> Always. I uh, am a huge BGS fan. They are, oh. they have, they do not mess up anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am not trying to actively sell my only BGS slabs now at all. I promise. Okay. This might change your mind on one specific, which you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about, one specific avenue to go down with it. So they don't have, because they are boomer, boomer grading services, right? BGS. 
Yep. They don't have 2024's Pokemon data yet. It's not available okay. on the website. They don't have yep. the graded numbers like from the new any set. set. No 2024 sets are uploaded yet. Wow. We're halfway through the year. Okay. Quick little jab just to start out with there. But I did manage to pull some older sets that I could get Pokemon. And I wanted to talk through the numbers a little bit because there's one or two little data points in there that is quite outstanding and borderline outlandish. And <laughs> whoever has, I'm, I'll jump into it and then I'll explain the next thing I was going to say. Someone has something special. Let me tell you that. So, Scarlet and Violet Base, BGS has graded 2,746 cards from Scarlet and Violet Base. 24 of them got black labels, uh, sorry, gold labels, and one of them got the black label. That's that Miriam that I pulled, um, the one where she's like falling to grab you know, and it's and it's like the very pretty background, all the colors, lots happening. Um, fantastic card. I understand why that was one of the most. When I was looking at the numbers, it was one of the most graded. Like a lot of people sent in the Miriam. Yeah, there's, there's one black label in that whole entire set, and we're talking about base. That was the first ever Scarlet and Violet set. From quite a while ago now. Yeah. And then year and a half. One, year. one black label. That's that nuts. really stood out to me that it was that low. I had no idea. Like that that there was there wasn't a single Pokemon graded in black label for Scotland Violet Base. Very interesting. Um, yeah. This is, this is why I hate Japanese black labels. Like this is this is cool to me. So this is English too. Let me. Yep. That's a good point that you said that because there are the numbers on Japanese are different. There are more black labels than, than what I'm what I'm showing on here. Real, um, real this, quick, I, I did a, I did a quick search. Fifty six thousand graded at PSA. The same set. So, I am. I do. You know what? I, I have those stats. I can I could put them there if we want to talk about them. I didn't put them on the presentation because I don't want to cloud it. But um, if you want to go through, if you're on there, if you want to go through, I think it is. I was going to mention that. I was going to get into yeah. the card. No, it's good. If you want to do it for each set, I think it's good. Yeah. So let's move on to the next one. So I'm going to I'm going to go chronologically. We're going to start at base, and we, they only have the first five sets from that year plugged in there they don't have any of the modern ones so the next one is Paldera Evolved they graded 1318 seven of them hit a gold label the 10 gold label this seven, is seven ten what I'm saying that seven, seven tens ten. out of 1318 only seven ten so people look at a, a gold label 10 and they think that's a PSA 9 essentially like people don't think that's anything special from the, from what I've gathered. There isn't any. Like that's a, an incredibly rare slab. Seven gold, ten labels, one black label in Pod Air Evolved. So one in over a thousand shot of getting a black label. So not the typical one or two percent like they they've done on previous sets, you know, previous things going on. That's where I've normally seen black labels is the kind of one in a hundred range. Um, this is over one in a thousand. And of course, just like with base being uh, Miriam, we have Party of All, which was, you know, pretty exciting set. Uh, we had the Iono, um, which again, I pulled terrible condition. So it's not, it's not surprising, but the only black label that they had. So the first two sets in Scotland and Violet, we only have two black labels. Yep, that makes not, about sense. It's insane. Not a great uh, start. There's about 40,000 graded at PSA and 15,010. So, yeah. Different planet. Not different planet, different galaxy. I yeah. mean, we are, we are black label 
is another galaxy in this in this particular um you know in this series of, of scott and violet so let's let's continue because it gets even more fun um obsidian flames we have 1676 graded three gold 10 labels and no black labels in over 1500 cards that have been sent in not a single black label so we're now looking at the first three sets and there's only two black labels and the whole and you think of how many cards are in that set and how many thousands have been sent in that only result in two black labels absolutely blew my mind do you sum this at the end? Because it was like 1600, 1400, something like that. So we're at like five grand, call it, with two black labels. I, I did I didn't because I was hoping to um I was hoping to continue it the whole way through, um, Scarlet and Violet, but I didn't realize that they didn't, they didn't have the numbers for the more recent sets uploaded. So um I I just grab these and and start basically on this first five sets but we can add them up quick yeah i mean you kind of did you know napkin math there yep but no black labels so anything on obsidian flames i feel like that's crazy to me it is the one weird thing i noticed is that scarlet and violet base had like fifty seven thousand graded and then it went down to like forty thousand for the paldea vault which some people say is like the favorite set and now it's back up to 57,000 graded for Obsidian Flame. That's really weird. I think which Pokemon is in there does make a difference on that on that side of stuff. Because yeah, what was what stood out to me on there is Pardia Evolved is the only one out of all of my things that has spiked price wise recently, but it's actually fairly low, like you say, on the on what's been sent in and graded. So maybe we're uncovering potential there i guess it is what i'm saying um let's jump into the next set because this it does get even more fun so here we have um with 151 three thousand sent in and only 13 tens and no black labels and yeah i know that you're pulling psa numbers right now that number's gonna blow your mind but zero black labels out of 3,000, 2,977 cards for 151 have been graded. And this is as of Monday. I pulled the numbers, I think, Monday night. So just FYI there. Um, it's not super accurate as of watching this video within a couple of days, but I, I, it can't have changed that much. Um, but yeah, no black labels. So now we're talking the first four sets of Scarlet and Violet. There's only two black labels, and neither of them are a Pokemon. Yeah, it's insane. Do you know offhand the Japanese number or no? Um, I, gl I glanced. There was a few of most of the sets. But it was still the ones that I saw were single digits. It was still very small. It, it was it wasn't as low as English though. Yeah. Um. Interesting. The yeah the PSA number is absurd. Uh, looking at this, it just it's clear as day that people understand, and it it makes zero sense to grade English cards with BGS because you are just getting power bomb fisted, like insane. Like no shot. Like there's I, you do not do modern. I guarantee all three thousand of those cards on 151 sent in were sent in in the hopes of getting on a black label. And not a single person got one. Yep. Oh, uh, that's that is a shit ton of people losing massive money. And time that's a lot of nine vibes. Yeah. Nine. That's depressing. Thirteen tens. PSA, one hundred twenty-five thousand graded. Oh, it was. I put it on Monday. It was one twenty-three, so it's gone up two thousand just in the past couple of days. It's, it's one twenty-four, three sixty-seven, so maybe one thousand. But yeah, that's a lot. What so, I don't like yeah. through what 
CDC is pissing me off because it doesn't sum the total number of pristine yep. braided. And That's why I didn't, I, I didn't pull it for CDC because I got frustrated with how terrible their pop report is. It I like their pop report more than PSAs, but if they could just sum those, that would be way, it would just be perfect. Um, yeah. Yeah, they have, I was shocked they're, they've graded one-fifth of what PSA did. That's not bad. As far as volume, 25,000. No, was... no, no, no. Are you talking about 151? Yeah. No, they've graded 3,000. No, CGC. Oh, okay. Becca did 3,000. CGC did 25,000. Yeah, I definitely think they capture a lot of the modern market now, way more than they used to. Like, as cards come out, people are definitely throwing to them. Yeah, I can't, one fifth is... yeah there's a lot. It's it's cool look, looking at this, but the, the idea of getting a black label has always been on my radar. I just never thought it was realistic. And these numbers are really telling me that it's not realistic. So just an FYI, guys, I'm going to throw you into the fifth and final set that we'll pull the numbers for that they have available, which is Paradox Rift. Um, so far, they have Man. BDG. That's supposed to say BGS. Um, 592 graded. So much lower number, obviously. The most recent set that they have populated. Eight. Actually, pretty good on the gold labels for, for how many? Eight gold tens and still no black labels. So what I'm seeing from BGS, from the data I have available, I haven't checked eBay or sold, so I haven't gone down any kind of rabbit hole. The whole of Scarlet and Violet right now in existence, there's only two English black labels, and neither of them are Pokemon. They're both trainers. What the absolute hell? Like I when I started pulling this and looking at it, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> just what? This is crazy. So many people are sending like you said, what's the total? There's thousands and thousands and thousands of cards getting sent in in the hope of getting a black label. BGS do not give out black labels. I don't care what anyone says. Like that is not happening. They just do not give out black labels. I would be really scared if I found out that those two were the same person too. That would be terrifying. Yeah, I can't quantify this in a percent. What is this percentage? Two into, call it 8,500. Oh, I can do that real quick. Um, 0.02 would be two percent, that would be two tenths. This is two hundredths of a percent black label rate. No, and the gem rate is fucking like 20 I mean, gold a, labels, 20 tens. A 10 alone is like you're more likely to get a hole in one on the golf course, right? There's like a one percent 10 rate. For modern English Beckett cards, please stop sending them. Unreal. One percent, basically. Like I'm rounding up, probably. I, I just, I cannot imagine how much. Let me throw that back. I cannot imagine how much money has been spent and lost, and how much disappointment on checking grades, how much disappointment on opening boxes. And thinking, like, just confusion. This card is so clean. It's so straight. Like, how is this not black label? There's nothing wrong with it. It's immaculate. I just know there's been so thousands and thousands of those thoughts running through people's minds. Two people. Two, potentially one, but two cards have a black label in the whole of Scarlet and Violet English. I yeah, know I know, anyone's, nobody's talked about that before, right? Like I, I, I have never had exposure to these numbers or anyone mentioning this for Scarlet and Violet. So when I saw it, I was like, "We have to talk about this." 
Yeah, I've I've noticed this. I haven't done it with Beckett because I don't give a shit about Beckett, but I've noticed this even with CGC, the pristine numbers on the English cards is really low. Um, it's not as low as black labels, but it shouldn't be. The because I look up like I have a bunch of saved filters for CGC pristine English cards minus Japanese is in a lot of my searches. Yep. And there's constantly zero items for sale. Um and I just looked up just ran, just BGS 10 Pokemon minus Japanese. And there's like maybe one card. All, all the most of the listings in here are Japanese. Literally. There is Celebrations Charizard, but that is the best printed set. But it, literally, it's the darkest shit in the world. For sure. Crazy. So is that it? Is it the print quality? Because I'm looking at the grading company thinking you're being too harsh right now, but is the quality that bad that you yeah. like you can't get a black label? There just isn't product that is realistic. Because I'm looking at BGS thinking, really? Like out of that many thousands, there really isn't one clean one. I would agree. Did you look up evolutions by chance? No. I'm really that shit, that set was dog shit too. Um I think we could do this again for some big sets. Like you say, evolutions, celebrations. I'd like to see generations. I'd, I'd like to look maybe even base set, you know, some some of those. I'd like to see some of those older sets and see what does that look like. Zero base set. It's it's just the print quality. The 100%. It's been this way for English forever. If, if you look at all these sets, the ones that will pop will be Evolving Skies, Crown Zenith, celebrations those are like the three best print quality sets in the last two three years um the rest of them are dog shit so probably highly submitted to high volume so more yep. likely to get it yeah best print quality and some of the highest sets submitted for sure interesting that they know that i feel like and they're like ah oh, we need to print these at this other facility because it's in addition to regular print runs i don't know but yeah that's uh that's wild i am a sucker for minty english cards i tell y'all i that's why i literally don't i don't blame you <laughs> i don't like getting japanese modern anything no i literally it, hate it it was it, is, it was definitely way higher it's but it was still freest, low but it was way higher it's freer than getting oxygen every day it, it's insane it's absolutely insane how free japanese modern is it's it makes sense to grade it and sell it holy shit um but as a collector give me some of that shit give me the pristine yeah. pens and the that shit's that's i like do it. not do not send that to bgs because it they literally not giving black labels Guys, I, I literally gave you the, the numbers for the whole year's worth of sets. They gave two black labels. That's wild. A whole year's worth. That was all five sets from that year. And they gave two. Probably a Beckett employee that submitted both of them, speculating. Do not sue me. I don't yeah. want to get, yeah, I don't want to get too into it, but. He's probably got that, both of them boys mounted on they, his mantle. I mean, something special is going on there. There's only two, right? Like, that's not just some random dude from Idaho. Could be. Yeah. Just saying. No. After all that. But we'll see. Yeah, that's We'll nuts. see. I'd, I'd be curious if anything came to light from that. So feel free to share this video with someone that you think might find that interesting. Um, so we buy another buy Do you want to? Should we? If the price is right. I emailed them. No, you didn't. I did. I, I emailed the trustee. Well, the, was say? it trustee? Whatever his phrase was he used. He didn't, Hi. He didn't respond. <laughs> Hi, this is Professor Oak's YouTube. I really think you have a great game. Your art is so phenomenal. I love Umu and Nick Strength and Pokemon. I mean, MetaZoo. I want to buy your game. 
Is that what you said? No, not too far off from it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty basic. I kept it very simple. Essentially said, hi, I understand you're the trust, you're the trustee, whatever the phrase was that he was using, the fiduciary. Um, I, I was like, I know you're representing them. I'm just curious what range are you looking for for offers? Um, is there a, uh, a current, a current like status of like time and, uh, minimum, like I just asked some basic questions. I'm interested. Send me more info. Like let's, let's roll with it basically. And crickets. So I'm, sh- I'm sure they got probably got a few like actual emails from people, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. What might come of that? Did you watch Nick Strengths and Pokemon's video about this and how what he wants to do? Yes. Where he was like, you get he he was just reading it off because I don't want to read that crap. He was like three point five million three point five million dollars worth of product. You got to pay. You will get that, but you got to pay the storage fees. And if you want to keep it there, you got to keep paying the storage fees. So. And then he's talking, he's like shilling it down in his discussion. Like he's like, well, that he's like, he's literally talking up all this stuff. Like, you gotta, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. He's like, I could see the offer being less than a million. Oh, I could see the offer being a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm like, uh-huh. he, he's like he kept going lower and lower. I mean, I don't know if he was trying to just throw people, um, but it was really weird the way he was talking about it like that but then he's like i would like if let me know if you want to get in on it with me and umu and i'm like i don't know it's it was it was strange i would guess it was over more than 100k but it also is it is a lot of work involved and you got to pay storage fees which i don't know how much that much that's more than 100k i'm pretty sure i don't remember what that number was but that'll kick you right in the balls And then you got to develop. It, it's it's tough for me because uh, he read some stuff at face value, and I don't know. I like him, so it was hard to like, like see him try to dissect it in a way where like I did understand some of the numbers that that I'd read in in the documentation. Yep. And f- the way that he dissected it and kind of presented it wasn't. That was his opinion. It wasn't really like the way that it would be understood as the full picture of yeah. what would happen with with the with an offer or how the accountants, trustees, that kind of, you know, that kind of stuff, how they would view it. Um, and it's not that simple. I think is what I would say. Like it's not as simple as as it was presented or how he perceived it, and it would be a lot of freaking stress. I will tell you that. And he kind of touched on that. He said, you know, you'd have to figure out this, you have to figure out that, and that kind of stuff. But you'd have a lot of eyes on you, first of all, which takes a mental toll. But there would just genuinely be a lot of paperwork and administration to figure out all the different places throughout the country where it's sold, held, marketed. There's just it's a spider web. It really is a true it's a true spider web touching so many things. Um I think the most surprising thing for me reading through the paperwork was the drastic drop in sales after the initial hype. Um and then the okay, I'm out without a rescue from Steve, Rudy, like a- any of the people that were invested oh, oh. In, in a sense. Like there was people that are monetarily, but also like business and emotionally invested in 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 it that didn't come to rescue at a point yeah. where the debts are pretty minimal. Like that's a pretty small debt for the revenue. Well, you know, when you're talking about like debt to asset ratio, um, 
I don't know. Is the whole thing is a little odd. I, I don't. I feel like I missed something. There's some. Yeah. There's a part of the puzzle piece missing for me on like the the why certain things are the way they are. If I was those guys, either of those guys, the two names you mentioned, Aoki or Rudy, and I had money into it, I am also. Aoki and Rudy, and I don't have effing time to develop and save a card game. I'm in the business of probably more so Aoki investing in things. Um, like I'm not like a, as a tech company type of investor, like here's a bunch of money and make it happen. I'm going to do it because it's a TCG and I, I feel it. it's cool. They are not going to have the time and the thought to even want to do that. He they could like have done that, though. Right? What do you mean? It, like, okay, buy Mike. Mike, without, like, I'll do that. I'll get someone that can come in and run it. I'll throw money at it. Yeah. I'll protect my I, investment I've already put into it and the time and effort. And I'll have them do it correctly because you fucked it up. I don't think that, to be honest, I think they're not in that business to do that. At all, I don't think they'd give an F. They're like, "Well, that what... one failed. On to the next one." That blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, maybe, with maybe... that that type of money, I'd be like, "F that! I'm not going to waste any more money in that dumpster fire. Let me go find something else." But they seem so into it. Like it's not just the money, right? Yeah. You, know, if... you see Jason Derillo pumping meme coins again? Like what? But there's like. The potential that could have come from Matazu's success, it was in friggin' Walmart shelves. Like, there's there's so much that could have happened with that game, shows, like plushes. Like, there's all these other things. You look at the size of Pokemon and what that became, the idea of being invested in something like that and just going like, nah, Mike's a twat, I'm out. Like what? There's there's so much more to it. The actual concept of MetaZoo was pretty cool. It's very unique, and there's a reason why it blew up initially. Like, why let that fizzle out? It's I don't know. It's it's the whole thing is I've got question marks all over the place. And for that reason, like that's why I didn't make an offer in the email. I asked questions, I, I tried to like seek to understand and get and get some insight just to see like is that something i don't know i, I still have so many question marks yeah. i don't know what's going on there i don't know what happened and what conversations i don't even know what it is like there isn't even much information in there and like what it is you even buying like what is even in the sale there, there wasn't a whole lot list that, that i could find so why? Know. Why did you email them? How cool of a thought is that? Being a part of revitalizing MetaZoo. If we got people in the Discord, just a bunch of us jumped in and like we just tried to get MetaZoo up and running again. I think the concept of it's fun. Like I think there's some really cool stuff that could happen. Imagine I did not like a, think you would be interested in it at all, to be honest. I didn't like what it was. Don't bring me fucking Hello Kitty. That's like yeah, I didn't think you ever had any good experience with it, to be honest. That's why I didn't think you were. I didn't think it was on your radar at all until I saw a co your note. In your... I, I liked what it. I liked the concept of what it is, and the, I see a lot of potential. I don't hate it. I never have hated it, I don't think. Like, I don't think there's ever been thoughts running through my head of, like, like, no, never, it's the worst thing. I, I've i always had a little bit, and I think that's, again, part of why that initial success blew up and why so many people bought into it early on, because they saw this is something that could be really cool, and it just didn't happen. Yeah. But I think it could. And I, I don't mean that like in a bragging way, like I could make it happen. But I mean, like anyone could make it happen. I'm excited for whoever buys into it or ever ends up owning it or running it or whatever. I, I, I just think that there's 
there's too much available to do something special with in the cryptid you know concept of it you know which is a worldwide phenomenon all over the place is it there's just too much to 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 not take it take a stab at that i don't know yeah it is super interesting to me you about to drop for like six ton 600 racks on that boy or what are we doing I mean, let's see what let's see what they bring back. I, 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 I was intrigued by it. Um, I by no means am going in as a solo guy making an offer, but interesting stuff. Um, Who knows? It also sounds like a nightmare um, running a company because, like, just all the things involved and. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems it would be a lot of work because you're not just going to buy it just to sell the product that's there. I mean, you could just do that yeah. and then just say you own a MetaZoo IP, but I think the thought behind it would be more to revitalize it, and that's going to take at least a year before you start seeing even product coming out to be available, and that that would be expedited. So you're going to buy this and be in the L for a while. I mean, the first thing you do, obviously, is like just get paperwork figured out. Where's what? Like, what's happening? Like, what is? What do I have in front of me right now? And what do I need to go do? Draw a plan for the next six months. Draw a plan for the next year. Draw a plan for the next five years. The first actionable thing you do is you get on a plane to Japan and you find Sao Sao and say, "I need you to be my illustrator." that's the first thing you do you need some yeah, real illustrators in there because the pictures are fucking dog shit like they're absolutely awful you need some good illustrators that that can make some art it's all subjective it's uh art is all opinion so poncho was a good artist quite right poncho was good they did good he did good he did subjective good. for sure it is subjective, and I, and I thought a lot of the Mezzo art was absolutely dreadful, awful, terrible. We just call Legend of Luke, uh, and he'd make it happen. We'd get it. We'd get it done. Can you imagine? I could. I'd literally go to his house and beg him to do artwork for it. Like so Give unique, that. so beautiful, like. That's what we need to do. That's what I'd do. I'd go yep. to Legend of Luke's house. I'd go to his house and I'd say, please, please, I'll do anything. Make artwork for my zoo. Or whatever. Give that to him. Just spit on that thing. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> oh, <No>. my God. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you right now, that so much potential for that game. It's a game too. It's not even just a cause. Like this, it's a game, and and that that ties into stuff too, right? Does that does it become a board game at some point? Does it become a computer game? Does it become a TV show? Like like games have potential spinoff because they tell a story. There's a story happening as you as you're playing it. You know, there's characters, there's locations, there's scenes, there's actions, and I I don't know. Yeah. It's it's I'm so disappointed in Mike. So incredibly disappointed on something that could have been so special, and I feel so let down in so many ways. Yeah, and so many people do. It's not just me that feels that way. For how much money that company made Unreal. to be only in those small debts, and that crippled it is insane. It's not the debt. That's what I'm saying. It's not that that doesn't make sense to, for gross revenue and net profit to be to look like that with whether it's current or non-current liabilities being at such a low spot and even accounting peeps out there you know what i'm talking about it doesn't make sense there's you some part profitable? of the puzzle is missing here define Did profitable. It was actually profitable define profitable that that that's the thing that not all the not everything's in there yeah like is Cash. Mike in a mansion? That would be that would tell me. That would be shitty. But. 
you could owe a million dollars, but if your monthly payment is ten dollars, you know what yeah. I mean? Like there's so there's a lot more to the. I need I need more of the numbers and the actual story of what's going on and what what it is, what's involved, and that's was some you know part of my questions that I sent in. Fairly basic, but it was a it was a decent email that that I shot over. So we'll see. We'll, you know, we'll see. Whatever. I'm interested. I mean, I am more mentally invested in it than ever as a biz business wise. Damn. Uh, that'll be cool. All right, man. Interesting. Glad to, good to know. Um, moving on from that MetaZoo segment. Now, this, this is a long one. Sorry. This channel, is, this episode is going to be Josh and Oak by MetaZoo. And uh, Hell yeah. the we I didn't think we'd ever have MetaZoo in our title again, but here no. we are. Um, $114,000 Japanese base, no rarity Blastoise sold in auction. It was in the PWCC, like signature type auction, the premier once a month thing. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the first edition base set Blastoise in a PSA 10 is like 20 grand right now this is almost 5x in the japanese variant the pop is low of course but still it's a set card with an insane price tag like one of the most if if proto stories didn't exist this is the king yeah and it still probably is the king because a lot of those bitches are popping up nowadays it seems but um that's insane what a effing sale crazy i, I mean i love it yeah it's amazing that that's that's what warms the the little chambers in my heart seeing that stuff just knowing that there's still people out there that want to invest so much money into something that's so special just the foundation of what all of this is built on that that card is truly one of the foundational pads right like it really is like the 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 initial concepts and everything yep how much cool. so psa 9 no rarity typically sells for more than first edition base no rarity and same for psa 8 and usually when you get to the psa 7 and, and maybe the 8s it shifts no rarities get cheaper than the first edition base demand is there's no demand for the the those versions i haven't they I haven't just want looked. the low pop high grade yep how much would you say it costs to build a ungraded first edition base set light played how much would that run you for just a hollow 16 cards any guess what that is now <laughs> I, I'm not up to date. Um, five grand? I don't, I don't know. No, so the charges are three grand minimum usually. Um, so you'd probably all in. You could probably get the whole set together, probably eight grand. Um, that much? Hmm. Yeah, I would say probably about eight grand. Because even the, come down more than that. So... The Blastoise and Venus Zora itself, they'll probably it depends on the condition. Like if you got PSA twos, you could probably PSA ones would be a premium, but you could probably get like absolute beat condition cards and get down to five grand. But again, the Zard is still like twenty five hundred, three grand. Um, yeah, but the no that. rarity stuff, I am getting close, four cards away from completing the entire set graded. And if I were to spend probably another, I could have bought a Charizard for $700. It was a PSA 1. Um, extra rare. But I'd probably all in $1,500 for a graded no rarity hollow set. Which is freaking, seems freaking nuts to me compared to oh. <laughs> putting together like, eight, yeah, literally. All the, all of these were like a hundred dollars a piece, not even these twelve. So the condition is 
a massive multiplier then. Yeah, it's insane. Like you can get like all the average grade in my hands PSA five. But it's still the same card. Yeah. Um and PSA like literally PSA five first edition base, you're talking one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars all day for like a freaking magneton. And it'll sell every day. Um yeah. I don't know. It just it's a little bit it's interesting. Obviously the Charizard's way bigger in English, but it's not because the no rarity Charizard is outselling the first edition base set Charizard. The last sale of that card was I don't even know what it was, it was like three hundred thousand dollars. It was like triple, yeah. It was like yeah, one point five X, but it's still um the no rarity stuff is the demands there for the high end, the PSA tens. It reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh! where there's really low pop on the tens and those sell for really high numbers and even the nines are semi-low pop similar to no rarity but nobody gives an f because they're nines mm -hmm. but in Yu-Gi-Oh, there's nothing really to compare it to there's no english or whatever there's no like similar thing but the no rarity we have the first edition base and it's first edition base claps it as you get into more light played moderate played cards crazy oh, what did you say the blastoise went for 114 uh, 114 and what was the charizard 300 so it's triple that's what i thought so it's venusaur last was like 500 or something my discord shut down and when i lost the internet but mm. yeah mm. crazy stuff some big numbers yeah, one day, one day we'll own one of those, right? I know you're talking about the Lugia too. You want to touch on that? Yeah, I want to know. I just want to share this picture and let me know when you see this. What are your thoughts? Okay. You might have seen it on Discord or not. I, mean, I don't know where you would see it, but what are your thoughts when you see this photo, right? Did I just remove it? add yeah okay 17th september 2023 25 23rd the modern one is 13 8 it's gonna have five cgc though and the pc9 is mm. what is what is this okay so we've got we have a higher technically a higher grade because that's Mint Plus, right? They call it Mint Plus. It's step, step below Gem Mint. Yep. And then it's a different year. Pretty far out. You know, six months plus kind of thing from the others. CGC. Mm, pop one. Yeah, higher pop. I mean, all I can think of when I see that is buying it and cracking it and <laughs> subbing it to, to PSA and selling it for more. That's like literally the first thing I think of. Like that just seems so incredibly undervalued. Or, yeah, like w the way this, to me, it looks like the way this was pictured, CGC is worth dog shit. Yeah, I mean, that's... I don't know. There's That's, no way other. There's no other way to look at this image, in my opinion. So whoever put this lower. together, that his name's that fine card on Instagram. Who whoever, whoever that is that does that, nobody knows. But yeah, it's the way he painted this picture. There's no way. Like he obviously was trying to make CGC look bad, especially red. Making the, the numbers red too. There were two other sales of mm -hmm. this card and a, in a BGS 9, and I believe maybe a PSA 9, that sold for less than $13,000 in 2024 on different auction sites. Mm. So the CGC 9.5 outperformed the last two sales in 2024 and they just completely is like, oh, it, it makes sense to just to completely ignore that. Like, what the fuck are we doing? 
because it wasn't PWCC. And maybe he doesn't just do PWCC, though, I don't believe. Maybe that's his thing, and he only does PWCC. Then it makes sense. But don't, because it's fucking stupid. It makes, like, it literally this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It, you're literally just painting a picture to create, like, drama because it's not even right. It's just stupid to me. Whoever I'd paid 30 grand got power fisted. I'd love to see that 9-5 in detail. I'd love to see its actual pictures from the scans. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Because that's, that's, that's a secure 9, potentially a 10. I mean, that sounds that sounds pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, that it's almost like um, deceitful from from what you're saying there. The way that it's yeah. the way that it's kind of imaged and and portrayed. It's shitty. Like I would be. It's just yeah. It's 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 really weird. It it just seems dirty. Like I don't know. I'm not a fan of that shit at all. So hmm. interesting stuff. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah, not a fan. Hit, um, hit, hit us with your your most recent video. Let's talk about Tag. Uh, sponsored by Tag? No, not sponsored. Not sponsored <laughs> by Tag. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so just got my Tag grading return back. Uh, and shout out again to the winner who's going to be getting a Tag slab. It's not going to be one of my base set cards or the Zapdos. You'll be getting one of those charizard cards but uh the zapdos did come back uh if you want to see that great go check out the video but i will show you i did get a 10 base unlimited charizard which was pretty cool Amazing. Um, this going from a cgc9 to this i would think it would increase the price which is insane um i think feels so good a tag eight first edition base set blastoise auction on pwcc for just under eight grand, like literally the same price as uh, like a CGC eight would sell for. Hmm. A CGC ten of this sells for like two point five grand, I think, or three grand. Can we do a spoiler on the first card that you show in the video too? The Venusaur, because that that was pretty special. Well. <laughs> Hitting the ten, yeah, that, that feels was... like a big one. I I literally saw that first one. I'm like, all right, it would have been sick to get more than more than just those two. Just spoiler alert, only those two tens. But um, can't complain about that. I'm on base set unlimited. They're really amazing. clean though. They are they're pretty damn clean. Pretty amazing to get tens on that, and especially with how you got hit by CGC back in the day with those yeah. as well. So that, that almost feels like a bit of recovery. You know, a yeah, little bit felt, of like, yeah, it felt good. It felt good, kind of like sticking it to him a little bit. Like, uh, mother effers, this could have been a C your CDC gem mint 10. It probably would be, yeah, for sure, with how harsh they were back then. But Ooh, excuse me, know. yeah, I mean, almost like affirmation, right? Like, you knew they were good and clean, yeah, yep. So, yeah, it's uh, I, I like them i saw java kuma's video shout out java kuma um yikes it just i knew they would have probably all eyes on me he's like hey josh here here's josh's tracking the cards are going to show up here because it's coming with the zapto i didn't even submit an order for the zapto so somebody somebody's receiving my package and they know all right, I got the golden ticket. I need to this this is special. This is special. All right, here you go into the computer. Okay. All right. Yep, into the computer. All right. Who knows? Um but they probably did that for all of them. And then we saw I saw Java Kuma's video who I wish he waited a month would be my only thing is like because now they could say, "Oh, we didn't we didn't uh fix our issue yet by the time we received oh, yeah 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 
they could play the timeline mm. card. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Very easily. So um and I would all day if I was them, I'd be like, oh, whoops. But eventually somebody else will do another video and they'll get they could get clapped if they miss them again. Like as it seems right now, generous on dents based on Java's return. Thus mm -hmm. they missed them again. Um mm -hmm. where there wasn't ultra vision on the cards being subbed in. Um, mine, I, like I said, I think there was skewed because they probably did have their eyes on it, which is why most of the, most of the report outs were like chef, like perfect chef's kiss. They did not miss a freaking damage. 13. Yeah. So it looked perfect for them, which is probably exactly what they wanted. So yeah. Interesting stuff. I kind of want to send them some stuff, but then, I don't know. Well, I... I need, I need a reason, I think is what it is. I need something needs to motivate me. I don't, I don't feel motivated to. If I sell what a CGC 9 Zard was for like two grand, you going to send them anything? Keep, keep me uh, keep me on the pulse. Yeah. Keep, that would keep be looking. A... Keep knocking those videos be, out. That'd be an effing come up. I tell you what. I literally was trying to sell this entire set for like two grand at a Collecticon in the CGC slab. So if I can sell if, a, a tag nine, tag ten, we, you knew how clean they were. I don't know. Yep. And you know, I'd be really excited by is if someone snap bought it too when you list it like if it uh, hits someone's um if you get it on ebay and it hits someone's saved searches and they just go yep i've been waiting for that and uh and just grab it could happen now's the time to list it i just had my video pop so yeah i mean really though that that i, I want that for you if you want to sell it Oh yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. I is there? It's not like I'm going like I want a binder set of base unlimited. I don't need this set of base unlimited. Yeah. I'm not that attached to base unlimited to where I'd like these slabs. It was cool when they're all CDC nines. They were the first, that was kind of the what kept me holding on to them is like. It probably was the first ever CGC nine set of base unlimited because they didn't give out for oh, nine. Hundred percent. Um, so that was it was a little bit more special to me, but now it's definitely not special. So, shout out, Paul Father. I told him I was like, man, we both graded base unlimited. I didn't know he didn't know I got this, and he he graded his ten at CGC. I was like, man, we both graded base unlimited tens in the same week. What are the so odds? So cool. It's so cool. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh my That's god. That's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, his is a pristine 10, though. His his would probably, for that reason, would probably sell for PSA 10 price. Yeah, it's a pretty special one. And I think it looked pretty cool in that new slab. You know, with the I say oh, new, it's not really new anymore, but the 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 new label. They look crispy. I think it looked pretty good, honestly. Hundred yeah. percent. I yep. didn't. I didn't hate it. Um, on that, I knew we we've talked a lot about grading companies today, but uh, PSA doing grader notes for some of those higher tiers right now. Um, do we think that's going to bring any interest? Is that going to bring any sales? Like, what was the play there? Because they've always been so resistant to give any information out on misgrades and and like just being honest and open and transparent on that stuff, and now suddenly they're giving notes if you pay for it. What do you think? I have a really. I just can't think that it, like we're gonna notice it. I think it was if it was for everything or like. If they did a four-point system of, you know, corners, edges, surface, center, and that kind of stuff, 
um, I think that would be that would revolutionize the whole grading process. I think everything would change. It'd be dramatic, dramatically different. But I think just adding notes to high tier items is I don't submit that many. I've I i do not even know if I've done more than half a dozen at that tier, honestly. Like I haven't done that many. What positives can this create for PSA? That's what I'm saying. Like I don't know. Zero. This is like, literally just for us. I don't think I can't think of one. And it will and again, it, I don't know if we mentioned it. It's only for the hundred and twenty nine tier, hundred and twenty nine dollar tier or greater, which is expensive. A five thousand dollar card, I think. Five grand. I think it's up to five grand. I don't um, know where it's at right now, honestly. So it will just be ultra scrutiny now on that level of grading. So if I so for example I send them this 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 Charizard and they give it a 10 and then the greater note says it's it's a 10 but it has one one thing of whitening here and one here and I get it back and I say oh no he's wrong there's a scratch on the front he missed that bitch I'm getting paid out like you didn't put that note down you didn't you didn't you didn't mm. say everything that was wrong with the card. You fucked up. You're paying me out now. Like that's that would be I would anything that like literally I would be like yeah, guarantee exactly would, like would kind you, of wrap into you that. Put yeah, yourself into a corner now. You're writing all these notes. I, if that's what they're doing, I don't know exactly. I would think they are. They're, I think that's what their plan is, like to say this is why it got this grade. I haven't seen one yet. I haven't seen a screenshot of anyone's, so I don't, I don't know what it looks it, like. It, but. it will put them in a corner, and they will be – it'll be exploited. Hmm. But, yeah, Oof. extra scrutiny on high-end cards, you love that too. Yikes. We'll see. We should next – uh, next time we get together for the podcast, we should go over some spicy comments that people have done the past few uh, past few videos. Do you have anything else you want to touch on before we wrap? No, I uh, appreciate everyone tuning in. Thanks again, Thrifty, for winning the hat. Uh, I look forward to you sending me that message. Yeah. Um, awesome. Appreciate you guys. Thank That's you. Guys. A fun one. All right, everyone. Please remember. Hit your comment in the comment section. Hit the thumbs up on the ones that you like. And hit like on the video. See you guys. Peace.